Well, 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 greetings and welcome back, channels and ladies men, to episode 8 of Exo, Exo Plays Donkey Kong Country 2 on the Game Boy Advance. In the last episode, we finished off an annoying racing section. In this episode, we're gonna actually... Mm, See, you're back again. Everybody likes old Cranky. I bet my ugly old wife doesn't get half as many visits. Enough talk, let's see your coins. An eight-legged friend would go halfway to helping you here. Don't be in a hurry to enter Rambi's room. Think things over. The fruit is always fresher on the other side of the thorns. Jump to it. It's his track, so watch the Kremlin car carefully. He might be down, but he's on his way out. A charge down the last street with Rambi will ensure a crushing victory. I was like, what do you mean last straight? But whatever. Start with a hook, stick, and jumps, and your bonus bound. And we'll add our feathers in over here. And we'll come back for the race later. Okay, so... And here we have our Swanky Kong. And looks like I will have plenty of coins for this. Come on, let's have a round of applause for them! What is the name of this area of the island? That would be it, Crazy Kremland. Alright! What color is your parrot, buddy? That's a red, green, and yellow. Name of the two companies that produce this game. Uh, that would be Kremsoft slash K-Roll Inc. Yeah, that's rare Nintendo. Alright, that's first quiz done. We have our balloon here, and we'll hop back into the brow. What is the name of the first hive level on this area of the island? That'd be Hornet Hole. What is the name of the old lady who runs Kong College? That's Wrinkly. Which of these items cannot be found at Clubba's Kiosk? Yeah, that's one of those ones that I forget. All right, the little monkey is a winner! Righty, righty, righty. What is your snake buddy's name? What color vest does old man Cranky Kong wear? They changed it from waistcoat to vest in this version. Which of these enemies have you not seen yet during this area of the island? That would be Cato Nine Tails. It was an annoying enemy coming up in the next stage. And that does it for Swanky. So it took us four worlds to fill up our lives counter in this game. So I think it is fair to say that this game is not as generous with the extra lives. I mean, I'm sure that that animal bonus makes all the difference when it comes to that. So these are Cat of Nine Tails. They are the most annoying enemy in the game, in my opinion. Uh, they will spin around like the Tasmanian Devil. And if they touch you, uh, if they touch you from the side, you get hurt. If you jump into them, uh, then... Well, I think... Actually, I don't think there's anything special in this chest. Because, like, sometimes the... There was another stage where they put a golden feather in it. Uh, but if you jump into them as they're twisted around, then they become basically like a launch pad. And there's some bonus rooms in the game, in fact one later in the stage, that utilize that sort of trick. There's our D- there's a DK barrel if you need it, but I don't. We'll platform our way around here. And now I've got to rely on roll jumps to make my way through here. There's a lovely Bernardus coin. And by the way, I learned from this stage that... Oh shit! Thought he was gonna slide off the edge, but... No, we're all good, fam. We're right, gonna collect some stars real quick, and this is one instance where we get to use our lovely... We get to use our lovely team-up mechanic. Which I have not used much of in the intervene. I know it's it's kind of neat to see that that mechanic get used a little bit more in a, in a, in a bonus stage, no less. Yeah. So, uh, before we play 
in the last episode, I was talking about audio, essentially, and I'm not gonna go on a big rant this time, or a big tirade, a big... <laughs> Jesus, Ryan, can, it, can this not wait? Uh, okay. Oh, of course, it's, it's, it's that guy. Hmm. Uh, okay, so, yeah, it was, it was not Ryan, it was some other, someone else. Uh, but... Okay. Oh, shit. I hope you're happy, Gavin, you made me lose that. Alright, I'll be right back, folks. Alright, and now we are finally, finally back to kick some tail. He's quick and nimble when she needs to be. She can float through the air and climb up trees. That's that's all I can remember of, of Tiny Kong's portion of the DK rap. But we are back in Mudhole Marsh. And by the way, I forgot to comment on something about this track. So, David Wise has stated publicly that an inspiration for... God, what the hell is this song called? Can't remember its fucking name. Bayou Boogie, that's what it's called. Bayou Boogie. And you, uh, I, I, I think I might have to trade in my DKC2 appreciation card after that failure. I should know the name of that song, but I digress. So, Bayou Boogie, David Weiss has stated publicly that uh, an inspiration for that particular song, especially <coughs> that part in the beginning, uh, was inspired by a Phil Collins song called In the Air Tonight. And if you go and listen to the Phil Collins song In the Air Tonight, like that 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 part at the beginning of Bayou Boogie is lifted straight out of it, like literally beat for beat. And it was kind of it was kind of weird hearing that like I was listening to some basically some old British alternative uh, about a month ago and then I heard the Phil Collins song on the radio and I'm like, "Shit, Phil Collins used to make good music?" Yeah, I just said that. Uh, you know, before he made crappy scores for children's films, he actually made real music. There we go. That one can be tricky to get. Uh, and it's one of those things where if you screw up, you have to play the whole level all over again, so... Time your jump carefully. I usually don't miss, but it, it would be... It, I would probably be complaining for hours if it had happened, so... Let's see, do I have enough creme coins? I do! It's 20 lashes with the canadine tails for ye if I don't get me booty this time, you filthy apes! And we'll pay up because we don't need to bar bother with the firebug in the minigame again. Alright. Uh, I think I know which level this one is. Uh, thank god it's not that one, but... Yeah, it's... yeah. Clobber Carnage! So, there are two levels in this game that are not my favorite. Clobber Carnage is one of them. It's it's not as bad as Stampede Sprint, or any of the fucking temple levels in the Retro Studios games, which I need to stop complaining about, by the way. It's like I was editing, I'm listening to me talk about the... and just complain about them the whole time, I'm just like, who the hell wants to listen to this? I don't want to listen to this, and I'm me! Uh, but I digress. This level is not so bad, is the point, but if there was a level that I'm- that I would say is, like, cheap or kind of frustrating to play, this would be one of them. Uh, so the gimmick here is we have a million clobbers that want to kill us. And they are constantly- and all kinds of clobbers, by the way. Th these are the black ones I was talking about earlier, the ones that take your lives. Um, so there- so the, this level is actually a glorified barrel cannon level. The gimmick is that there are a bunch of these rotating ones. We saw these before in, I think, the first swamp stage. And the, the gimmick with them is you can spin them around and shoot whenever you want, but there's a time limit. And there are a whole bunch of them in this stage. It's expecting to explode there. This one does not have a time limit, but the gimmick is it's on a track and you've got to shoot yourself to the other barrels to avoid the zingers so that you can get to the other side unscathed. And it's it's tricky. 
but nothing that I would hate. Uh, I do have a public service announcement about this stage. If do not play this game, if and it's and it relates to the SNES version specifically, do not play the SNES version in an emulator. Uh, because, at least in SNES 9X anyway, uh, there is a glitch. Actually, it might have been ZSNES. One of those SNES emulators. There's some kind of glitch with these stages where the barrels will constantly spin and you can't stop them. I don't know what causes it or why, but it is really annoying. And, you know, the last time I, one of the last times I played the SNES version was in an emulator. And I had a real shit time with that, so. Yeah, be careful. Okay, I think we're nearing the end of this of the stage. See, like I said, it's not that bad, but it is one of the levels that I do kind of not love especially much. And there's our golden feather. And if we shoot yourself towards that Bananas, you will unlock the bonus room for the level with our DK coin in it. I used to think you had to bring Dixie to the end of the stage, but you don't. Uh, I alluded to this bonus room earlier, it's one of my favorites in the game, because you just kill zingers, and it's so satisfying, because they give you so much shit in this game. I think someone found out that there's, like, only, like, a couple levels in the entire game that does not have zingers in them. So, yeah. It's, it's satisfying to kick their asses. And just like that, we're already done this level. Okay. Now that we're done with Clobber Carnage, we can move on back over to Crazy Kremland and continue our conquest of the island. So far, I seem to have found everything. Let me just double check real quick, because it never hurts. Yeah. So, here we have Ramby Rumble, which is the last level in the world. You know, and... And second thought, I think what I'm going to do is, because this, this part is shaping up to be pretty short, actually. I'm just rolling on through Crazy Kremland. That is not something I... Oh yeah, we've got our cranky race. Never mind. This this part should be long enough. Um, so... One of the more cleverly hidden golden feathers over here. So make sure you don't miss this. So this is one of the few areas in the game. And not this part specifically, but a part coming up, where I feel like the visibility... No matter which version you're playing, but I suppose it's the issue is heightened in the GBA version, where you have less vertical resolution specifically. Is that part there, it is possible while you're... Hidden hooks, by the way. There was that part back there, we basically had to drop down, and there were zingers and stuff we couldn't see, and that, that to me is just a bit cheap. I, I would have... I would have made it so that you're, like, dropping down on hooks or something, and you had to dodge the zingers that were kind of, like, at the bottom of the screen. I would have done that, but instead they basically have you do a blind drop down that shaft, and I'm not a fan of that. But it's, you know, it's not the worst thing. It's like, I, I know this game, so I can get past it just fine. So here, we actually learn a pivotal difference in the AI of the Cutlasses. In the original game, they would not come after you until you would land on the ledge in front of them. But in this version of the game, they are a lot more aggressive. As you can see, like, you don't have to be on the same X... You don't have to be on the same X plane as them in order for them to attack you. But the good news is that you can still roll into them, and once their swords are down, they're stuck, and you have some time to jump over and get them, so it's not like a game-breaking flaw. Uh, as I once saw someone suggest in a comment on a video I watched a long time ago. Like, it's... I don't know. I understand why people don't like these versions. I get it. And it feels like some of the stuff they complain about is just, like, the silliest thing. Like, I understand if you don't like the new graphics, I understand if you don't like the new sound, but... These games play fine, and that's the most important thing. Uh, I digress. We're coming up to the gimmick of the, of the stage. Uh, that there is the boss of the world. That's King Zing. And it looks like his sprite didn't get shrunk for this version. Or, I don't know, it probably did. Now, jump our way over here. 
And you do have to be kind of fast, because right at the end here, and Cranky did give us a hint about that, there is a hidden bonus room in the wall. And that's another one that could be easy to miss, but, you know, like I said, Cranky tells you about it, so it's not like the most obscure thing in the world. Uh, so you just run on over over here, kill some Kremlings, some Zinger Dingers, Zinger Klinger Winger. And that's it, we're done with that bonus room and we are done with this stage. And I didn't get the G. Unlike Granny from Hoodwinked, I am not tri a triple G. So, with that, all we have left is the boss, so we're going to go pay Cranky a visit and do our race for the world. Especially now that we have a few more feathers. You would think your fancy graphics and sound will work again? I think not. You'll be lucky to sell ten copies this time. Here's what I got to offer. We'll power up our espresso real quick. We'll go for speed and strength, as always, and I'll just plop those on. And I did find out in one of the previous episodes that you're... When you set your feathers to something, it's not permanent, so if your stats aren't where you want them to be, you know, you're... you can... You can do that if you want. But, I don't know, I like... I... Just part of me just likes to keep things a little bit more balanced than that, so that's... that's what we're gonna go with. Uh, that should be more than enough to get us through Tremors, the worm got our lovely racing section here. Mima. wonder if he has his own line of syrup. Espresso Mima griddle cake sandwiches. Now that's a reference no one will get. And even though I have my strength all the way up, they still pushed me around. Oh, here's, here's where they introduce a new... I, another sort of platforming element to these stages. Uh, those logs... Uh, it is possible to fall off, and it won't instantly kill you or anything, but it will stop you. Or it basically you'll fall off the ledge and then respawn is what is what happens. Uh, I'm gonna have to play a little bit more carefully here because I'm I'm running to everything. I have mm. that's what happens when you don't play for a while, folks. But at the same time, I kind of want to avoid the. DKC1 situation I found myself in where, like, I had so much stuff recorded ahead of time that uh, I couldn't, you know, respond to some things that people were talking about. So, that and I was trying to get the Pac-Man World video done with, because I took way too long to get that one out. And, I don't know, I guess there are a whole bunch of things, this is nothing new for, the, for this series in particular, that I did not cover. Oh boy. Man, they are really far behind me. Like, speed and strength, folks, that's where it's at. So we're almost done this race. Oh boy. Grab those real quick and that should do it. We're done. It's another race under our belts, folks. Alright, folks. First place! Well done! Get first in all the races, and I'll give you a nice surprise! Alright. And that's another one under our belt, folks. Now we can move on to the boss real quick, and we'll call it apart. And it looks like it's gonna end up being about 20 minutes, so that's, that's, that's good. Uh, this boss coming up is actually one of the hardest, I think, in the game. I know when I first played Donkey Kong Country 2 on Virtual Console, by the way, they took out the banana coins up here. Like, I think I know the differences between versions probably better than most, because I've actually played it, for one. <laughs> Instead of just watching YouTube footage of it for five seconds. Oh, God. Alright, so the gimmick with King Zing, he's like Queen Bee, except a much better boss, in my opinion, no matter what version you're playing. 
as uh, he you sh you shoot him in the stinger. That's his weak point, and then he will fly on. Then he will go into a mode where he'll start shooting needles at you. And when he does that, I find that the easiest way to dodge it is to go all the way up to the top of the stage, and that way you can just dodge the the one that's coming straight upwards. Because if if you get stuck between him and the wall, then it's like really difficult to dodge those things, because even slight movements will drastically alter the tra trajectory of those needles. And then once you once you hit him on the stinger six times, he'll split into five little zingers here. And like uh, our wrinkly hint told us, eventually the, zing the little zingers do respawn, so you want to take care of them quickly. Once you get the four guardian ones, he'll turn vulnerable, and you'll know he'll be vulnerable because he'll turn yellow. And you just dodge him and shoot him when you get the chance, and one more hit should just about do it. And voila, that's that's all there is to it, folks. Where does K. Rudolph keep getting those giant zingers from? Come on, let's go to Gloomy Gulch. You don't have time to play in the shooting gallery now. And with that, we have completed Crazy Kremland, and we are moving on to the, the spoopiest world in the game. That being uh, Gloomy Gulch. And we fully completed that world as well. So yeah. Okay, so before I go, because who knows, uh, actually this should be partway through the week by the time this... No, this should be a Monday part. Um, excuse me. So what I wanted to say about sequencing and pre-recording is that the reason why so many GBA games sound so bad or at least, you know, as that's what people will say, is they, they don't understand why the game sounds so... the sound quality sounds kind of poor. The reason for that is that sequenced audio also requires CPU power. Whereas with pre-recorded, you know, the, the disadvantage is that it takes up more space, so you, you gotta balance memory and hardware and, you know, and quality as well. So when... so like, for example, uh, Castlevania Harmony of Dissonance. Castlevania Harmony of Dissonance. That game has some kind of poor sound quality in it. And the reason for that is the game is more hardware intensive. And it needs to use the CPU both to run the game and to do a whole bunch of other stuff like that. As well as basically put all the sound, all the music and sound effects together in real time. And when you do that, it's... I guess the game is too hardware intensive to have good sounding music and, you know, the fast paced gameplay it's known for at the same time. So, yeah. Uh, all those things go our considerations when composing music for the Game Boy Advance. So, it's just. You know, so I guess it's because I know about all that stuff, I'm more lenient than most people, I guess. Uh, certainly there are games that sound better than Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2 on Game Boy Advance, but I think that compared to the Klonoa games, uh, compared to... I don't know, what the hell else is on Game Boy Advance? Compared to a lot of games in the system, the fact that there is no 8-bit instrumentation whatsoever in these versions is kind of... is kind of puts it in a class above a lot of music on the system, so... You know, higher quality samples in the SNES version, for sure. But, I think that all things considered, consider, considering the hardware limitations, considering the fact that the GBA has 8-bit sound, I think they did a pretty decent job with it. That doesn't mean that I like all the new versions of the tracks, and I'm sure I'll be pointing one out in the next world here, but... I think they did the best with what they had, and... You know, there are some tracks that I think sound better in this version. And, you know, then, then there are some that I think sound better than the other versions. I could, I could go with either, personally, but, you know, regardless. With that long diatribe over, join me in part 9. Yeah, it should be part 9. And we will continue. Actually, no. Part, yeah, it should be, this is part 8, so the next should be part 9. So join me in part 9, we'll go on to Gloomy Gulch. And until then, I'm Axio, and I hope you enjoyed the Let's Play episode.